and you're in the market for a new GPU, should you consider a Founders Edition version instead of a third-party version? Well, let's find out. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. If you like my content, please remember to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment. I wanna hear which GPU you're using now and if you've ever considered the Founders Edition or if you always go for a third-party cooler. All right, so let's discuss this question. When you're in the market for a GPU and let's say a Founders Edition from Nvidia is available, do you go for that? or do you go for a third party card? Now, for those who aren't familiar with the reference cards or the Founders Editions, um, these started a few years ago where Nvidia started to produce their own cards and sell them directly. Now, before you would have EVGA or Asus or MSI make their own version of a card and sell it to the consumer, but then recently Nvidia has really been pushing their own cards a lot more. Even if you go somewhere locally, such as a Best Buy, you will often see a lot of Founders Edition cards next to the third party cards. Now, a few years ago, basically this was the breakdown. A Founders Edition card is gonna have a blower style cooler. That means that all of the hot air is gonna sort of exit from the back. Um, it has just a single fan as an intake. The hot air gets exhausted out. This was a very popular car to use for something like a small form factor PC because then you don't have all that hot air turning the PC really, really hot and you know heating up your CPU and other components. Everything's going out. Now, if you had a case with really good airflow, this type of card was generally not really ideal. Why? Well, first, it's a lot louder than a card with like triple fans or a third party card generally is. It also gets a lot warmer. It's generally gonna cap out at, you know, the older Founder Edition cards like a 1080 Ti um, or even like a 980 or something like that. They would cap out around 84C, which a third party card is gonna be significantly cooler, sometimes in the 60s or 70s without water cooling. This is just with, you know, a better fan design. So a few years ago, these Founders Edition cards had that blower style cooler. A lot of people who do water cooling like these cards because they have what we call a reference PCB and often they're some of the best cards to water cool. But if you're in the market for a GPU and you're not gonna be water cooling it, what's the difference today? Like I said, if it was a few years ago, always sort of the third party cards are gonna be better. They're gonna be more stacked with cooling. They're gonna have maybe a, you know, a double or triple fan. They're gonna be a lot quieter. They're gonna be overclocked often higher. Um, but now things have changed a little bit with the recent RTX, you know, the 2070 Super, like I showed you in the beginning of the video, uh, 2080, 2060 Super. These Founders Edition cards, have a double fan now so it's kind of replicating what the third parties used to do because I guess Nvidia finally figured out that the best way to sort of have a cooler go on one of these cards is going to be this fan system instead of the blower style. Now the blower style cards are still available um, but generally somebody like Asus will make it like the turbo version like the 2080 turbo for example which you can still water cool. Um, and it's still available because people like putting them in small cases like we discussed earlier um, because thermally it just makes a lot more sense because if you put one of these graphics cards with fans in a small case it's just going to create a mess with the thermals. So the more recent NVIDIA Founders Editions of this generation they're actually pretty good. Like for example, this 27 Super, um, it's $499, so we'll start there. The price is often lower than the third party cards now. Um, this one's $499. Likewise, the 2060 Super Founders Edition is about $399. So for example, the 2070 Super is gonna be about $499, which is gonna be a good deal lower than mostly any other 2070 Super from the third party cards. Now let's compare a third party card to this Founders Edition card. Um, the Founders Edition card is going to be $499. Something like an EVGA XC Ultra with a custom cooler. You know, it's going to be one of the best sort of custom uh, 2070 Supers. You may be able to find that for something like $540, $550. Bucks. So let's call it a $50 difference. Now, what are you getting for that $50 difference? First, the cooling on the EVGA is gonna be a bit better because a lot of these cards are like a two and a half slot. They're really thick um, and some of them have three fans like the 4 the one three. In this case, the XC Ultra only has two fans and I actually did test it against the Founders Edition and I found that generally it's gonna stay in the 60s 
The founder's edition will go all the way up to like 72, 73C in the same case with the same cooling conditions. And thus, it's also a little bit louder because the fans have to spin up a little bit more. Um, so basically for that $50 difference, you're not really getting much more performance. Even if you get like a Ford the Win 3, which is their flagship 2070 Super, you may get two, 3%, 5% tops in some games performance wise. But what you are getting often with a card like that is a custom PCB, which may be a little better for overclocking. And your thermals are gonna be, you know, five to seven degrees better in a lot of cases. And you're gonna be able to run the card without as much noise. And it definitely has its own unique look to it. So if you prefer that versus the Founder Edition, that's gonna be one of the points to consider as well. Even though the 2070 Super is cheaper than something like a third party EVGA or Asus card, don't let that fool you. The build quality is exceptional. I've always found the build quality of these Founders Edition cards to be the best pretty much, like top notch. You hold the cards, they're not that much plastic. It feels substantial. Um, all the materials are amazing. You know, they feel really good. I think they look great. Um, some of these third party cards, sometimes they do look a little cheap. Even some of the 2080 Ti's that you're paying a lot of money for, the Founders Edition really feels substantial. It feels heavier in a lot of cases. So a few years ago, if you put a Founders Edition card in sort of a mid-tower case with a decent amount of cooling, you may get some funny comments on the internet if you share your build, because people are gonna tell you, why did you do that? Just get a third party card, it's gonna have a lot better cooling and a lot better noise. Nowadays, a lot of times it still is the case because the newer Founders Edition, technically it still runs hotter than a third party card, a good third party card. Um, it's also gonna run a little bit noisier sometimes, um, but often the performance is pretty good because the reference PCB is generally almost like a bin chip from Nvidia. So they're definitely um, great performing cards. But I do think if you have a case that has decent cooling, most likely you should go towards a third party card just because I think you're gonna eke out a little bit more performance. Now, if that's in your budget, of course, if your budget maxes out at like the 2070 Super 499 and you don't wanna spend that extra 50 bucks, you're gonna be more than happy with something like a Founders Edition card. You may be even happier in some cases with the things that I mentioned before, such as the build quality and just the general feel of the card. Plus, you're not really losing much in performance. You may have a little bit noisier, warmer card, but if you have some good airflow in your case, those problems are easily mitigated. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you like my content. Remember to like, Leave a comment. I'm curious to know what GPUs you guys are using and if you've ever considered a Founders Edition versus a third-party card and what you guys think of that. So I'll check you guys out on the next video.